This is Oball, and this is my updated guide on pressing 1. I'll be going over what's good for ratings since that's been out for a while, and some overall updated suggestions as well. So here's a DPS or Revenant will do in a group setting with all the buffs, aside from Ranger buffs. You notice the numbers are a little lower than I showed before, that's because I'm no longer assuming Night Sigil and Slang Potion since they shouldn't apply to raids, and that's really the relevant content anymore. I'm using Air Sigil and Bountiful Sharpening Stones. I added a whole bunch of different legend combinations to better show your options and what they can achieve. You can see that Dwarf is actually better than Malak's, so I wouldn't really bother running Malak's anymore. So in general, you want to run Glint Shiro if you do not have a Mesmer in your group, or you're playing alone because you have no friends since all you're doing is pressing 1. If you have a Mesmer in your group or split, which you should pretty much always have for raids with a Revenant, you want to run Glint Dwarf and always have F2 up. Between that and your Mesmer, you should have permanent quickness, and Shiro would be pretty much meaningless. Equilibrium will add about 500 more DPS over the course of a minute. This could potentially be a loss for your group though if you're producing less boons for your group, since others will have boon damage multipliers as well as you. If you lose one less boon, it's only going to be about 200 DPS more. If you lose two, just for yourself, it's going to be loss in DPS over not proccing it. This is assuming that you don't have perma quickness on either, so if you do have that, then it's probably not going to be worth it. It's definitely not worth it over spamming Precision Strike if bosses have adds around them. Taking Centaur really tanks your damage, so you should only take it when it's needed. If you're just starting out and you don't have Herald yet, you should take Shiro and Dwarf. Here's the Revenant DPS under Permanent Quickness and Alacrity. You see Jalus is pretty close to Malak's in this case because Vengeful Hammers aren't affected by Quickness. It's still a little bit better and you have better AoE for the adds around bosses, as well as damage reduction. Something like an Ellie would do more DPS because pressing 1 doesn't get affected by Alacrity at all, and that's basically all you're going to do. Your other skills you'll only get to use once per legend anyway as well. This also assumes that you're using Precision Strike once per legend and getting the full effect of it. For builds you want Devastation, Invocation, and Herald. Under Devastation you want Vicious Lacerations, Assassin's Presence, and Swift Termination. The first line of invocation doesn't really matter, usually you go with cleansing channel, conditions don't apply, you can run cruel pre repercussion, or fierce infusion, though you should have permanent fury anyway for your facets. You want equilibrium and rolling mist. Under herald, you want harding persistence, unless you're doing something where aggro is important, and you're stealing it, I would run radiant revival instead. You want Shared Empowerment and Elder's Force. If Blind Spam is really important for hard trash and nobody else can do this, you can drop Invocation for Salvation and take Blinding Truce. This means that you can take Centaur, you can use the tablet, and just spam the movement skill right on top of where the enemies will be. And it's a 2 second cooldown, and so you'll be blinding everything in the general area every two seconds, which is pretty strong. If you're just starting out and you don't have Herald yet, I would go with Corruption as your third line. It doesn't add much damage or anything, but it adds damage at least the others don't. Go with Venom Enhancement, Bolstered Anguish, and Maniacal Persistence, since you really won't be using your lead at all. As soon as you get Herald and get access to Facet of Nature, I would just swap it out. For Herald. For gear, you want full Berserker gear, the Scholar runes, power infusions. Strength runes aren't bad if you're solo or you're in times where you'll have low might if you're bugging and such. A strength sigil wouldn't be bad in that case though, for less of a DPS loss. You'll be proccing might more from your trait and glint since the glint facets are only 3 second intervals and your trait is 1 second cooldown. And for weapon sigils you want air and force. You can get some knight and some slang if you'd like. It's up to you. Mostly you want to run sword axe and staff on swap. It's good to have for CCs if you absolutely need it, but I wouldn't really do it unless you really need it or it's off the start of a fight that isn't a raid. And you could have all the other weapons if you'd like sword and shield have some good box if you want to utilize those 
Mace is a fire field. Hammer's not bad for ranging when you need it, just spam too. If you're not in Shiro. For consumables, bowls of seaweed salad would be the best. Keep in mind that unrelenting assault and frigid blitz won't get impacted by it since you're not technically moving yourself. Balls of sweet and spicy butternut squash soup would be the next best thing. Fried golden dumplings are the best for soloing. Powerful sharpening scents would be your best choice. 10% boon duration is quite nice over cheaper stones and use slang potions if they apply instead. For rotations at the start of the fight I would start off in glint and stack as much boons as you can so I'd use passive nature and everything except your elite to get the boons up at the start of a fight especially in raids since they reset your boons after a few seconds which is really lame and towards the end of when you're running out of your energy you want to use elemental blast because it is a DPS gain and then you'll want to swap to your next legend if you're swapping to Shiro you want to use enchanted daggers always use it when you first swap before you use impossible odds to maximize on DPS. Once you've used your heal or you don't have it up, go ahead and use impossible odds and just run out your energy with impossible odds. Once you've run out your energy, you want to swap right back. If there is a boss that has adds around it, you want to get in the hitbox of it and use precision strike. Reason for that is you can hit up to three times can see here I just hit a bunch of times instead of just the one and unrelenting assault is good to use if you can work it in if you have the energy it's a small DPS gain you also get quite a bit of might from it if you're running out your energy you want to use frigid blitz too it's not a DPS gain or a loss so that's good temporal rift if you need to use it for break bars it's a loss if you don't if you're using Dorf, you want to use Vengeful Hammers right as you swap into it. There is a trick to it. If you're not using Perma Quickness, you won't need Fast of Nature up. So you can utilize Equilibrium and get a bit more damage than just keeping the Hammers active at all times. So when you swap to it, put it up immediately. And then wait for your energy to drain to about 33%. And then when you're about to swap back, it'll be over 50 so you'll get the equilibrium proc and this is just generally what you'll do for rotations what facets and if you want to proc equilibrium is totally up to you I hope this guide helped and you learned quite a bit from it uh, aside from this special little trick here or exploit I don't know what you would call it you can report me for such things if you like but anyway see you next time I demand that you release me.
makes me right.